Greetings, everyone. This is Live Life Well TV host from with Landau. We are here for you. And you want to know why? Because we are here with another episode of a weekly show here on Live Life Well TV that we call Top 10, which means to say that every week we take a look at a different mm, top 10 list of a particular subject. And this episode, we're going to take an interesting look at 10 famous pets in history. Are you ready? You won't believe some of them. And we are going to start with that in just a minute. So, before the proceedings begin, we would like to acknowledge a website by the name of FlavorWire.com. So, 10 famous pets in history. And this guy that we're going to talk about first, I don't want to mispronounce his name, and I probably will. So let me spell it for you. Well, let me say it first. It's Tycho Brahe. But just in case, let me spell it. It's T-Y-C-H-O, last name B-R-A-H-E. And Tycho Brahe had a pet moose. That's right, a pet moose. Aside from having a stellar mustache, uh, not the moose, but him, 16th century astronomer Tycho Brahe had a pet moose. But this wasn't just any old moose, oh no. It was known to roam free during parties and consume more alcohol than its human counterparts. One evening, for example, the animal allegedly drank too much beer with dinner, fell down the stairs, and died. But if you think about it, what a way to go. <laughs> Next up, Audrey Hepburn. And Audrey Hepburn, if you can believe this or not, had a pet deer. In 1959, Audrey Hepburn landed a role as a forest girl in a film by the name of Green Mansions. With this job came a baby deer by the name of Pippin, given to the actress in order to establish a bond that would definitely translate on screen. Hepburn kept the deer post-production, creating its bed out of a bathtub and letting it roam about her estate. Mostly, Pippin just followed Hepburn's every footstep. That sounds adorable. Next up, Lord Byron's Bear. It's getting more interesting by the number, huh? Lord Byron, as you might know, one of the 19th century romantic movement's most famous poets, played owner to a number of unusual species during his life. The strangest, however, served as his roommate at Cambridge's Trinity College. When the university forbade pet dogs on its premises, Byron stuck it to the man, made sure that only canines were prohibited by the school's laws, and found himself a pet bear instead. Because Trinity officials similarly found no rules restricting bears, Byron and his large furry friend lived happily ever after. How do you maintain a pet bear over the course of time? I think Lord Byron should have written a poem about that. Next up, George Clooney's pig. I actually remember this. If you've ever wondered who has received the most kisses from notorious heartbreaker George Clooney, there's an idea that Max the star happens to hold that record. 
Clooney shared a bond with his beloved potbelly pig that lasted from 1988 until the passing of Max back in 2006, perhaps the longest relationship in The Bachelors, The Bachelors, notorious history of short-term commitments. Of course, now he's happily married for quite some time. So, pet pig, interesting. Next, we move to John Quincy Adams, alligator. Can you imagine having any of these wonderful animals as pets? I mean, I love animals, absolutely adore them. And I'm a big animal rights believer. And not that any of these animals we're talking about here are getting abused, far from it, they're getting extra love. All animals should get love like these guys that we're mentioning here, but, the maintenance of taking care of these pets on a daily basis really is admirable if you think about it. And now we're going to move to John Quincy Adams Alligator. Back in 1826, the Marquis de Lafayette gave John Quincy Adams an alligator. Like any modern day presidential pet, the Adams alligator was allowed to live in the White House with the first family in the White House. But it's unclear whether the uh, gator was confined or let free in the White House. Who knows? <laughs> Next, we have Salvador Dali's ocelot. Salvador Dali's pet ocelot by the name of Babu saw, saw more of the world than most of us humans see in a lifetime. The painter Dali took Babu everywhere, even aboard luxury cruises. An ocelot allowed on cruise ships. Interesting. But I guess if you're Salvador Dali, it's okay. Next up, Steve Tyler's pet raccoon. Steven Tyler, a uh, member of the rock band Aerosmith. Um, Tyler had a pet raccoon as a kid because um, how could he not have a raccoon? He's a very exotic type personality. During an appearance on The Late Show with David Letterman back in the day, Tyler elaborated on his relationship with the critter, admitting, I put it on my shoulder and went fishing with it every day. So there you go. How about Teddy Roosevelt's White House Zoo? Theodore Roosevelt takes the cake for the most unusual presidential pets with more than 20 animals in the White House at any given time. A crowd favorite was Roosevelt's one-legged rooster. This crippled farm animal was joined by countless dogs, cats, and guinea pigs in the White House, while a zebra, hyena, lions and bears could be found at the Roosevelt's Long Island summer house. Wow. This next one, many of you will probably remember quite well, Michael Jackson's monkey. Who can forget Bubbles, the world's favorite tea-loving chimpanzee? Adopted in the early 1980s, Bubbles slept in a crib in Michael Jackson's room, used his toilet, and even toured Japan with the king of pop. And last but not least, we have King George I's human pet. This might be categorized as a strange one, so you tell me, in 1725, Great Britain's King George I found an abandoned child living in German woods. Given the name Peter the Wild Boy, the child could not be taught to speak 
and walked on all fours. The fascinated king brought Peter to Kensington Palace, where he remained for the rest of his life, known as George I's human pet. I just read what I'm told to read. Anyway, did you enjoy that? It certainly was interesting. And I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. We'll see you on the next episode of Top 10.